happy holidays, crafters. It is the festive, chilly, celebratory, crafty time of year. My favorite. And of course that means it's time to make some festive outfits. But this year I kind of narrowed things down a bit. I want to be comfy and cozy and I don't want to take a lot of time making these new items because I kind of got other things to do these days, right? Today I want to tackle a skirt project. Pretty basic pattern. I'm going to tweak it a little bit so it's probably going to get more complicated. You, you know me. But pretty basic pattern. I'm using some really cozy flannel. I think it's going to be super cute. It's plaid. It's going to be warm and cozy. I could dress it up or I could make it really casual. I think it's going to be the perfect thing to wear now during the holidays, but also into the new year, you know, when the weather is grumpy and I'm grumpy. And because, hey, a flannel skirt is basically like wearing your flannel PJs, but in a work appropriate fashion. Let's dive in on this project. I'll talk you through the fabric I'm using, the pattern I'm using, the modifications I decide to make, and I'll show you the process and the results. Let's dive in. Let's get crafting. Okay, guys, here's our fabric. We got a whole bunch of this gray and white flannel. I think it's from Joann's. I got a really big remnant of it last year I think and I've been hoarding it ever since and it is high time to get it out of my fabric stash and do something with it. So here is our pattern we're going to be working with. I was excited to find this one because I do love me a peasant skirt and I was especially thinking of this simpler design for today. I like the elastic waistband. I love that the skirt is full and flary but not quite as ruffly as you know the tiered one i think this one's going to be really easy to wear and especially out of this like cozy fabric could be super cute i'm definitely going for a maxi length on this one so it should be awesome let's see yeah that's what we're going for okay let's take a look at our pattern directions okay so this pattern's kind of cool uh, they are calling it a Learn to sew level one. Yay. I'm a learner sewer. I like basic patterns, right? Well, this one has a whole bunch of directions on it, which is really cool. Talking you through it and stuff. Uh, but I gotta say, I am finding a major beef with this pattern. <laughs> learner sewers, maybe you've discovered some things before that are like this. I think this pattern at least part of it is showing me how to do something in a way that is like two or three more times more complicated than it needs to be. Ugh! Okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're going for the basic skirt. There's a front panel and a back panel, and there's a front waistband and a back waistband. That's about it. But instead of sewing both the front and the back of the skirt together and then gathering that, and stitching the front and back of the waistband together into like a, a, a circle and then attaching the skirt to the waistband. This is what they're, I th this is what they're doing. They're taking the front of the skirt, gathering it, sewing it to the front waistband and then back of the skirt and gathering it and sewing it to the back waistband. Yeah, the front and the back are separate here. Okay, that's cool. Let's keep going. Okay, and then they even have you insert elastic into the front panel and stitch the edges closed. And then do it to the back panel and stitch the edges closed. What? Huh? Am I getting this right? Okay, that's just so weird. And then it looks like, oh, finally, we're pinning the the skirt sides together and stitching, and then you're having one waistband overlap and stitch closed. What? Okay, why? What's going on here? Oh, 
Oh my gosh, okay, I see. I get it now. It looks like the front waistband piece doesn't actually have elastic in it. I was wrong. It's the back waistband piece that has elastic in it. And so the back is going to be all gathered -y and scrunchy, and the front is going to be flat. Uh, let's, let's double check the old picture here. That must be what they're doing here. Okay, front view, waistband is flat. Back view, the waistband is scrunchy. Um, okay, that looks nice. Um, I've definitely had like pants and skirts to do that and it's comfy to wear, but it looks really nice on the front. I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's like three times more complicated than like the stretchy waist of a peasant skirt needs to be in my life. I. I don't need the the beautiful front flat waistband no um hey if you want to do that do it it will look very nice and I, okay now i finally get why they're doing that but i'm not doing that no way <laughs> uh-uh i'm gonna sew the front of the skirt to the back of the skirt the front of the waistband to the back of the waistband then i'm gonna gather the top of the whole skirt all the way around and pin it to the circle that will be the waistband. And then I'll insert elastic into the whole thing and call it a day. <laughs> ah, man, sewers, if you're a learner like me and you get frustrated working with patterns, it's not just because you're new to this and you got a whole lot to learn. Sometimes it isn't you. Sometimes the level one learn to sew pattern is doing a detail that looks nice, but it I don't think that's level one. That that does not have to be that complicated. If you're making a basic skirt, dude, just make up, just put elastic into the waistband. Good grief, people. Ugh. Anyway, I vindicate you, learner sewers. It may not be you. It 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 may be this. <laughs> you're frustrated. Alright, well, I'm gonna work off some of my frustration by um cutting out my pattern and doing a whole bunch of, of pinning and, and cutting out and I'll get back to you guys when I'm done. <laughs> okay, well we got the pieces cut out. Pretty basic. Front of the skirt, back of the skirt, front waistband, back waistband. I'm kind of interested to see the shape of this skirt. The skirt pieces are basically really big rectangles and I'm going to see if I like that or not. I usually use panels that are more A-line, but um, this could be pretty cute. I don't know. I'll, I'll test it out, see if I might want to modify it again in the future. Speaking of testing things out, I just want to show you kind of what I did with the waistband pieces. So in the original skirt, the front of the waistband, which is this guy, wouldn't be gathered. And then the back waistband would be this guy, but you cut him on a fold. So he would be twice as long as he is. So he's longer. Three is, would be longer than two. I'm going to add elastic to the whole waistband, however. So instead of making the front and the back different, I just cut out two threes. You know, of course, on the fold. So twice as long as this. I'm kind of going to play around with this. I'm going to hold these the fabric pieces up to my waist and just see if they seem a little too big. I don't want so much gathering around the waist that it's really bulky, but I do want enough fabric to give me a good stretch and a little ruffling. So I may end up trimming maybe an inch or two off of each waistband piece. I'm going to hold it up to myself and see what I want to do. But um, yeah, other than that, I've got... The piece is cut out, so I'll need to pin the skirt pieces together along the side seams. And then I'll run some gathering stitches along the top all the way around that tube that will be formed so that I can gather the skirt. Then, of course, I'll need to sew the waistband pieces together. And I can gather the skirt to the waistband. Let's dive in. Hey guys, it's a new day and I've got some progress on the skirt. Going to show you what I'm doing. Also, if you hear some noise, there's some work being done on the apartment next door to me. So, 
don't be concerned. But um, yeah, I've got the two skirt pieces sewn together, right sides together. Let's take a look at that in a second. Um, I did forget <laughs> to cut out the pieces of interfacing that go in the waistband. And interfacing is this kind of like papery stuff. It's got kind of like a sticky dot pattern on one side and it's smooth on the other. Follow those package directions. I'm going to iron it on to my waistband pieces and it's going to stick to the back side and make it thicker, which is nice for the waistband. Oh, also, I did trim these waistband pieces down about an inch and a half, I think, because they were going to be really long and pretty bulky around my waist when gathered up, so I thought I'd reduce a little bit of that. I did make sure to make them long enough to fit over the widest part of my hips and butt. That will be important because I do need that waistband to stretch enough to allow me to put this on. So hopefully I've kind of estimated the trimming amount correctly. I don't know. We'll see. I've got these pieces ready. I'll need to iron those on before I stitch these guys together on the sides to make a big circle for the waist. I'll show you that in a minute, but hey. We're looking at our skirt. Hey, let's pull this a little closer here. All right. I did sew the side seams up. And you can tell I also did like a kind of a zigzag stitch over the raw edges. That is kind of my cheap and cheerful way to finish the edges, kind of. <laughs> I also did two lines, really big stitches across the front panel. And then I did two lines of really big stitching along the back panel as well. And these are going to help me gather up my fabric. Okay, let me see if I can find some of these raw edges. Okay, I didn't finish the edges of the stitching. Like, I didn't back stitch over it or anything. I left the tails really long. And I'll show you on camera here a little closer in a minute. But if you pull on one of the threads, I'm like pulling on the lowest one it can scrunch up the fabric. And it's hard to do with one hand here, but I'll show you better in a minute. But that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be kind of scrunching up the fabric across the, the front panel. And then my, my stitching stops over there. And then I'm gonna be doing the same thing. I got two lines of stitching going on the back panel. You could do like one continuous line of stitches all the way around. I just find it's easier to gather in sections. So I'm going to gather up the front section and the back section. And eventually this big rectangle of skirt. Oh, <laughs> there goes the equipment next door. This big rectangle of skirt will get gathered to fit the smaller waistband. Okay, enough talk. Let's do. Okay guys, waistband update before we get to skirt gathering. You might have noticed I have trimmed this waistband down even more. So what I did was I pinned the edges closed as if my pins were stitching. So going right where I would stitch. And then I put this big kind of donut of the waistband. Oh yeah, here's that iron on interfacing stuck on there. Mm -hmm. So I put this donut around my hips and butt and I wanted to see how well it fit over and I had a lot of extra fabric so what I did was I kind of just played around, moved the pins until they f fit closer to that curviest part of me and then I trimmed down the extra fabric because I don't need it super wide around the waist. I just need it wide enough to get over the curviest part of me. So I would suggest, yeah, since our waistband here is of course going to be really big since we're using that, that really long piece of the skirt pattern, try, try t putting the donut <laughs> around your waist and trim it down until it fits around there, maybe with a little bit of wiggle room, but you don't need too much more bulk than that. I think total I'm removing about, gosh, probably a little more than five inches from each piece total. I'm kind of breaking that up from like each side. I trimmed a little bit from each side, a little bit from the other side. And I think, yeah, total I've taken off a little more than that off of each, the front and the back piece. 
And now I've kind of put this on again. It fits pretty nicely over my hips and butt. So I'm going to sew where my pins are. I'm going to make that sewing instead. I will then have a waistband. I can gather the skirt to it and we can go from there. Let's get skirt gathering. interrupt this skirt gathering to show you some steps on the waistband that I should have done earlier but I didn't <laughs> because you know easy projects you always do everything in the right order and, and do it all right and it goes efficiently and quickly right yeah no okay uh, so take a peek on on the waistband and of course the top of the skirt there are these cool little like notches for you and those are there to help you line up the same points on the skirt with the corresponding points on the waistband so that when you've gathered all that fabric to your skirt and you have all these scrunchies and you gather it all up, you can match up the points with the waistband and points on the skirt and make sure that all your gathers are even. But we trimmed fabric off of each end of this waistband. So these notches are now not evenly spaced. So I folded my waistband in half so I could figure out the middle point and then I folded the skirt kind of roughly in half to figure out the middle point as well. So I'll, I can match up middle points and I can, of course, match up the sides. And that will help me as I attach this waistband to the skirt to make sure I'm doing it evenly. Also, the other edge of the skirt, as the directions note, and as I forgot until now, needs you to iron under 5 eighths of an inch on that side so that you'll have like a nice clean edge to work with when you fold your waistband over and stitch down the other side. But we'll get to that. Let's get back to attaching this waistband to the gathered skirt. took a long time <laughs> but got the waistband pinned to the skirt yep it's eventually you know I'm gonna stitch all the way around I'll stitch with normal seam allowance all the way around double check that I like all the gathers and good things and then I will probably stitch again like within the seam allowance just to reinforce the waistband to the skirt attachment. 
Just double checking. Yeah, I got right sides together. That's good. This waistband is eventually going to get... Whoa, hard to do with one hand. Sorry. It's eventually going to get folded over and stitched down on the inside. But, uh, yeah. All right. We got some some stitching to do. Hey, we got the skirt stitched to the waistband. All right. I got two lines of stitching going all the way around. I've trimmed the edges a little bit and eaten those up. Let's see if we can see this thing. Yeah, there we go. Hey, let's see it from the other side. Ooh, I like that. Okay, now our job is going to be to fold over this lovely ironed edge and match it up with basically like the stitching for the skirt, kind of line it up like that all the way around. And hey, we're making kind of a little tube for that elastic. I love it. All right, so now I need to pin this down and I'm going to leave a little gap. So I'm going to pin all the way around except for a gap. And then I'm going to do a little bit of hand stitching, trying to stitch this part to the fabric underneath without letting it show a lot on the other side. That might take a little while. I'm going to make some tea, turn on a YouTube video or something, <laughs> chill out. I'm going to you know, make sure I leave a gap in my pinning and my stitching because once we've stitched this this waistband down, we'll have a tube going all the way around, and that's where we're going to put our elastic to scrunch this waist in a little bit. So I want to make sure I leave a gap so that I can get the elastic into the tube. All right, let's switch to time lapse and do some pinning, and then I'll do some stitching, and I'll show you what it looks like. Time to put the elastic into the waistband that we've created. All right, well, I've done some little tiny stitches, stitching down our beautiful waistband, which is now a tube. And of course, I left a little gap here so that we can put the elastic inside. I've got a little safety pin attached to my one inch elastic, and the safety pin's gonna help me feed the elastic through the tube all the way around the skirt. Once I've got it in there and it looks kind of scrunchy, it's going to be all kind of bunched up a little bit. Then I'm going to try on the skirt and play around with how big or small I need that waistband to be to sit comfortably. And once I found that point, I'll overlap the edges of my elastic. Hang on a second. Let me get an idea. Let me get an edge here so you can see what I'm going to do. And the when I got the elastic going all the way around, I got the length I want. I'll overlap the edges like that nice and flat and then I'll do like a little like some zigzag stitches across that to hold it in place I will then have a waistband I can also do some little stitches to close up that waistband gap when that's done so let's go to time lapse and I'm gonna get some elastic in the waistband here we go
Okay guys, we're almost done. We just gotta hem the skirt. I tried it on and I figured out where I wanted the bottom of the skirt to be. Did a little pinning and a little checking to make sure. And now I'm just going around making a rolled hem. There's my mark, I wanna roll up to that. So I'm gonna roll part way up and meet it there. Stick some pins in it, iron it down, and then stitch it. And I think we're gonna be golden on this. Um, just a side note, I'm about 5'5", five five, and this skirt was basically like just long enough to be maxi length and have a good hem on it. So if you're taller than me, maybe add a little extra few inches to the bottom of your skirt just in case. Make sure it's long enough for you. But you guys, I'm going to get to some hemming. And while I do, it's a great time for you guys to hit that like button. <laughs> if you found this video amusing, and subscribe for more stuff from Partners in Craft. Thank you guys, as always, for sharing the love. I'm going to get to uh, stitching, and I'll show you when we're done. <laughs>